Hi there, welcome back for another lesson. Today I'm going to talk about representing atoms using two different types of diagrams, the Lewis diagram and the ball and stick diagram. Those are going to be useful when we start talking about chemical reaction equations. So for now we're just going to look at the diagrams, but down the road when we look at actual reactions, this will help us understand how those reactions actually work, so their, their inner workings type of thing. Okay, so let's begin. So, first up, the Lewis notation or Lewis diagram. These diagrams represent um, the atom and their valence electrons. So you can see here period number two that goes from lithium all the way to neon. And you see that each atom has a certain number of dots which corresponds to their number of valence electrons. So, for example, carbon has four valence electrons, nitrogen has five, oxygen six, fluorine seven, Neon has eight. Now, it's important to realize that the dots um, are drawn a certain way. There's a certain system to this. So imagine there is an invisible box, and it has to be invisible. Do not draw this on uh, during an exam, but I just want you to understand the idea. So let's say I take a nice red. So picture as if there is a box around your symbol. So in other words, there are four sides to that symbol. When we draw the dots, we start on one side. It doesn't matter which side we begin uh, or where we begin, but we go around clockwise. Okay, so we draw all the dots and then we start doubling up. So if I look at nitrogen, for example, we would have gone one, two, three, four, and then doubled up one side to do five. And again, it doesn't matter where you begin. If we look at fluorine, we might have done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we do all four sides first and then we start doubling up. We cannot put more than two dots per side. So this is basically what it can look like. It doesn't matter which period you choose because we know that the groups go from group one or one valence electron all the way to group eight. There's no other case than what you see here. The only thing that will change is the symbol in the middle of the dots. So that's for the Lewis notation. This will be helpful when we draw actual reactions to see what kind of atoms give away an electron or several electrons and which ones tend to gain electrons and therefore how many bonds they create. But for now we're going to stick to just a simple notation. Next we have the ball and stick model. So it says it, ball and stick, because there are two components to this. So the atoms are represented by spheres or balls. Now their size uh, is dependent on the size of the atom. So for example, hydrogen only has one energy level. It's a very small sphere, as opposed to calcium that has more energy levels. So we would draw a bigger sphere. We may or may not identify the sphere depending on the type or the case that we have at hand, but we can. So here they are identified. I'll show you an example after whereby it was not identified or they were not identified and why that would be. The sticks represent the number of bonds that the atoms can form. So in the previous lesson, when we talked about chemical reactivity, we looked at the number of valence electrons, which is linked to their group number. So the number of valence electrons determines how many electrons will be lost or gained by an atom. So group 1A, the atoms would lose their one valence electron to become stable. Group 2 would lose two electrons, group 3 would lose or give away three electrons, and so on and so forth. On the other side, group 5 would gain three, group 6 would gain two to go up to eight, and group 7 would gain one electron, the one that's missing, to have a full octet. So based on how many electrons are gained or lost, we know how many bonds will get formed. So hydrogen, for example, has one valence electron, so it will lose one electron and form one bond. And that's why there is one stick coming out of an atom of hydrogen. Same thing for this atom of hydrogen. Now, if you look at oxygen, how many sticks are coming out of it? There are two. And it makes sense because oxygen is in group six. 
So it will need to gain two electrons in order to become stable. If it gains two electrons, it'll form two bonds, so two sticks. Again, when we talk about types of bonds, we will revisit this topic. But for now, all you need to know is that the number of bonds corresponds to the number of valence electrons gained or lost, and that these sticks represent those bonds being created during um, a chemical reaction, so the bonds within a molecule. Now, this is another way that uh, it could be used or, or that balance, the balance stick diagrams could be represented. So we have actual reactions here. So we have sodium and fluorine that we will react together to form NaF, sodium fluoride. So sodium is a bigger atom than fluorine, so the spheres are not the same size. And I said before, you could put the symbol inside, but here we have the actual chemical reaction equation, so we don't need to identify the spheres. They, they are identified above by the actual reaction. So Na and F will react together and create a bond. So sodium is in group one, creates one bond because it loses one electron. Fluorine is in group seven, so hal the halogens, right? So it will need to gain one electron, so it will create one bond. So that one bond is represented here between the two atoms. Then we have barium that reacts with two atoms of fluorine. So when the number is in the front, that means that the atoms are separate. Okay, so it's a little bit like a multiplication. I have two times one atom of fluorine. Barium is a very big atom as opposed to the atoms of fluorine. So all of these will collide together in a container um, and will then create the following molecule whereby the two atoms of fluorine are attached to the atom of barium. And that's why the two ends up at the bottom here. Again, this concept will be revisited later on. I'm just giving you a little bit of intro. So barium gets attached to each atom of fluorine. So fluorine is a halogen. It has seven valence electrons. It needs to gain one to be stable. So that represents one bond each. And if you take barium, barium has two sticks coming out of it. So that implies that barium creates two bonds, and it makes sense because barium is in group number two. It has two valence electrons, and it will give them away and create two bonds, okay? So the sticks represent the bonds, the spheres represent the atoms, and the spheres, the size of the spheres are dependent on the type of atom that you have, if it's a small one or a large one. And that's it. It's as simple as that. So hopefully it was clear as usual. If you have a question, don't hesitate and ask. And otherwise, I will see you next time for another lesson. Take care.